Hello, algebra students. Welcome back to another video lesson today where we continue on from your Desmos activity talking about classifying polynomials based upon the number of terms and the degree of the polynomial. So can we classify it, meaning give it a name based on its terms, or can we describe what the degree of that polynomial is. And so again, you had a, a Desmos activity on this previously, and so it's just kind of expanding it and making sure we understand what was happening. So here's the first one. Take a look at this polynomial and classify it as monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none. All right, it does have one term, two terms, Three terms. If it's got three terms, we would classify it as a trinomial because it has those three terms. Now, the next part of this is to look at what is the degree of the entire trinomial? What is the degree? So the degree relates to the variables in each term. Okay, imagine for a moment this 6z to the third, the long way to write that out would be 6 times z times z times z, right? So how many variables would that have? Three. So we would say that term, just that term has a degree of three. Look at the middle term. Imagine if we wrote this all out. We would have 5x, x, x, y, y, y. So what would the degree of just this term be? It would be a 6, because we'd have six variables, six letters written out. This one would then have a degree of 5 for that term, because we'd have four x's and one y. So each term might have its own unique degree. Sometimes it might be the same numbers. Um, but when we classify the degree of the entire trinomial of the entire thing, we are looking for the largest degree, the largest. So in this case, this trinomial has a degree of six. We just say that it has a degree of six. When you get to advanced algebra pre-calc, you're going to learn that that could mean the answers to this trinomial, we might have six possible solutions. Okay, but each one we look at individually, and then the largest degree is the degree of the entire polynomial. Let's take a look at another one. Classify the above as a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or none. All right, there is a little bit of a dilemma here. X cubed, Y squared, Z to the negative fourth. Those of you that said monomial, I understand why you would have said it. However, monomial is incorrect for this one. Because we have this element right here, Z to the negative fourth. We cannot have negative exponents because mathematically speaking, what that does is it moves that element of the term x cubed y squared it moves that element to the denominator and becomes positive positive. and one of the rules that we said for polynomials is that we cannot have variables in the denominator so this one is none so if you have a negative exponent on a variable, this is only related to the variables, or it's in the bottom, the denominator, it would be none. All right, so I want you to pause the video and try to create a monomial, right? Create a monomial that uses two variables and has a degree of four. A monomial, two variables, and has a degree of four. All right, I hope you created one. I'm gonna try and go through a bunch of different possibilities, right? So a monomial means one term. So we're not gonna have any addition or subtraction signs in this one, none at all, one term. Two variables, I'm just gonna list an X and a Y, X times Y to start out with my two variables. And they need to have a degree of four, right? So if I underline this term, it would have a degree of four. 
meaning I could have 2 and 2. I could have x to the third, y to the first. Or I could have x to the first, y to the third. And you could put any number out front that you would want to, right? It wouldn't matter what number's out front because that doesn't impact the degree. Now, what we cannot have is like x to the zero, y to the fourth, because that means we don't actually have two variables. So this piece right here doesn't count as a variable if it's raised to the zero power. So we were looking for something x squared, y squared, or something x to the third, y to the first, or something x to the first, y cubed. All right, one more final example. Let's see if we can't simplify this expression, simplify it, and then determine the degree. So see if you can't simplify that first. Well, to simplify, we have to distribute the 4 first. 4x squared minus 12xy squared minus 5x squared. Once we've distributed, we need to look and see if we can't identify any like terms. There's an x squared and there's an x squared. So I'm going to combine those together. Four of them and negative five gives me negative one x squared minus the 12xy squared. 12xy squared. We cannot join those two together because those are different terms. One's a cat, one's a dog, one's an apple, one's an orange, whichever way you want to look at it. So that's simplified. And now that it's simplified, we can look at the degree of each term. How many variables here? That would be two. How many variables here? That would be three. So therefore, the degree of this entire binomial would be three, yeah, right? And it turned into a binomial. Not that we needed to write that down, but just in case. And so before we can identify degrees or even classifying it by name, we do have to make sure we simplify first and then we can identify those pieces. You're gonna practice a lot of this type of problem today by simplifying, by identifying naming, and classifying your polynomial by name and by degree. If you have questions as you're working today, please make sure that you reach out. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.